Once the image has been stretched, we recommend extracting the lightness component from here. We can use this new image later as a mask to adjust the contrast separately in the areas where we've applied the dynamic range compression. Now we're going to compress the dynamic range and look at how the different color options work. Let's apply it with seven layers and with a lightness mask. Applying it with seven layers prevents this structure from getting too dark and activating the lightness mask prevents this from happening to these other structures outside the nucleus. Let's look at the color representation we get here with the default options. We need to think about color within the context of multiscale processing. This dynamic range compression is going to give us a color representation where the hues tend to move away from the dominant tone around them. The human eye does this too. For example, try staring at this square. The longer you stare at it, the more pink it starts to look. But if we look at the pixel readout, it's actually gray. So why does it look pink? Because pink is the complementary color of green, which is the color dominating the screen here. Our eyes gradually adapt to that green and start to see the gray as pink. Something similar happens here. We can only see these greens because they are a different color to their surroundings. We'll look at this again later using another example, but now we're going to compare this result with the one we get when we select the Two Intensity option to apply the dynamic range compression to the intensity component only. This option was introduced by Russell Croman and it allows you to preserve the original hues at the same time as recovering the color saturation. Here we can see the difference between the two results. This operation is performed in the HSI color space, which isn't a colorimetric space. If we want to completely preserve the lightness of the original hues, we need to use one of these two options. If we use the Two Lightness option, we only compress the dynamic range in the lightness of the image and the chrominance will remain intact. If we select the Preserve Hue option, the hues will remain intact. However, both of these options have a drawback that is difficult to control in images with a high dynamic range like this one. When we preserve the original chrominance, the color saturation remains intact, so the nucleus looks completely gray. There is color information here, but we need to recover it using a very aggressive curve. If we apply the curve again, the colors finally appear. And in fact, they look very like the ones we get when we apply the compression to the intensity component. For images with such a high dynamic range, the Two Lightness and Preserve Hue options are difficult to control, but the Two Intensity option offers a good balance between preserving the original hues and recovering the color saturation. Is it better to preserve the original hues or highlight the color deviations at the local level? There's no right or wrong answer. It depends on what we're trying to do and what we want to communicate with the color in our photograph. Let's look at another example. Here we have an image of M51. In the first preview, we've applied the process with six layers and a lightness mask. In the second, we selected the Two Intensity option. As you can see, selecting the Two Intensity option preserves all the brown and orange hues around the nuclei of the galaxies. But this result is interesting too. In the companion galaxy, the compression has recovered the blue tones from early star populations that are not recovered by the compression with the Two Intensity option enabled. In these areas around the nucleus, the color deviates slightly toward the blue, so when we apply the compression without the Two Intensity option, these blue hues become visible. In fact, if we compare this with the image of the galaxy taken in ultraviolet by the Galax satellite, we can see that the companion galaxy does in fact have bluish star populations that emit in the ultraviolet range. As you can see, the choice between these two options comes down to the physical phenomenon we want to communicate in our photograph. Finally, 
Let's look at how to use this lightness mask. For this processing to be effective, it's down to the photographer to strike a new balance so that the scene is communicated correctly. We're going to load this mask and adjust the contrast in the lightest and darkest areas separately. HDRMT is a very powerful tool, but it compresses the dynamic range so much that the regions it works on become very flat. With a mask, we can adjust the contrast within those areas. We're going to do this using curves. First, we sample the pixel values and make the slope steeper here. We don't need to touch the shadows. Finally, we increase the color saturation. As you can see, we've recovered the contrast inside the nucleus of the nebula. But if you look closely, you'll see that the darkest areas have also been affected slightly. If we don't want this to happen, we can increase the separation between the light areas and the dark ones with a curve too. Let's save this curve, and now we can darken the mask so that the central area stays bright, but the background areas go completely dark. Now that we've adjusted this mask, we can apply the curves again. And now the background areas are no longer affected. If we apply HDRMT with the Two Intensity option enabled, we won't normally need to increase the color saturation so much, but it's important to check the result every time. Now we've adjusted the contrast in the nucleus. Let's accumulate these two previews. And now we're going to adjust the contrast in the outer areas. To do this, we invert the mask. Here we adjust the contrast again. But above all, we need to adjust the color saturation to strike a balance with the color saturation in the nucleus of the nebula. And we do the same to this preview. Here's the result of processing it without the two intensity option and with the two intensity option. Two different results with two different meanings. Mm -hmm.